Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi ta'ala wabarakatuh uh, I feel so honored to be here again today I was here yesterday we had a very tremendous lovely time together we sat together we ate together we prayed together Alhamdulillah ala animatul Islam Alhamdulillah ala animatul Rasul Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said Aksiru salata alayya ni yawm al jumah Make sure you recite excess salawat alayya for me Make sure every Friday you recite excess salawat ala Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Man salla ala Muhammad marratan wahida Whosoever prays and send blessing upon Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam A single time Allah will reward him back and send salawat back to him 10 times. This is part of great things we have in Islam because Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he really suffered for this religion. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave this lovely religion to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam when it wasn't even fashionable to come out and declare your faith. Then in Mecca they have around 365 idols, which means they have single idol per day. And they keep it all in Kaaba, house of Allah. House of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, idols. They keep it there all day for years. Before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and it spread Islam across the globe. But it wasn't so easy. That is why as a Muslim, when you are facing some difficulties or turbulence, you have to stick to Allah. Allah wasn't give anyone assurance that you will not face any problem. But he gave us proper, proper assurance that you will overcome whatsoever the challenges. You will become victorious. You will come out victorious out of it. Whatsoever you are facing, Allah is there with you. When Prophet Muhammad وسلم, keep preaching about Islam, he became their enemy. Because of what? Because of Islam. Because of what? Because of what we are enjoying today as a Muslim. He and several of his companions, they were suffered for this. They were tortured, beaten. Some were killed. And Alhamdulillah, today we are able to come out, declare our faith openly, and nothing will happen. There was a small house then, Darul Halqa teaching house where Prophet Wasallam and other companions used to sit, discuss, talk about Islam. They did that for like three years. It wasn't fashionable to go out. Just the way we sat, in, we sit inside this mosque, all of them will sit there, pray in silence. That is why sometimes when you pray to God in silence, Allah accepts it much more. When you remember God in your mind, because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, look in your heart much more than your face. In the filjasa di mudga, in Isa salahat, hot salahat kulla, wa Isa fasadat, fasadat kullu jasad. Jasad kullu fasad. Isa fasadta hadha al-mudga. Wa kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa ma hadha al-mudga. Alladhi fina. Wa kala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Ala wa hiya al-qadim. We have this little flesh. In our body. This little part. If it get destroyed. Your body get destroyed. Faiza salahat. 
if you purify it, if you keep it in shape, then everything in your body is in total, is in shape totally. Allah wa hiya al That is your heart. What you have in your mind, what you have in your heart, Allah cherishes it much more sometimes than what you are saying in your mouth. Some of us are Muslim, some of us are not. Some are saying we believe in Allah. And they are not. But we hear what they say, they are saying. But we are unable to see their heart. That is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala take what in your heart much more important that, than what you have on your thought. For our own wife, radiallahu anha, she never prayed, never fasted ever in her life. But he believed, she believed so much in Allah and put Allah in her heart. That is all. And he gained al Jannah, he gained paradise totally. Despite that, her husband was claiming he is the owner of the world for out. Fraud was claiming he was the owner of the world. He kept, he kept saying, he, he, he built everything. Abraj, buildings, tower. Ana rabbukum al I am your Lord. Fraud said so. And his wife wasn't believing him. He was like, she was like, my husband, she knew down in her heart, like, no, you are just a mortal like us, but you have the opportunity. People are looking at you, they are calling you what you are not. Let's wait and see. One lovely day for our wife, they have a lot of maids, hair out. They were dressing her hair for her. A pin dropped down. And pinch her at a, in her toe. The, the, the needle dropped down, hurt her toe. She shouted, Oh, la ilaha illallah. In her husband's presence, instead of saying, La ilaha illallah for out, because that was a popular word. That is what you must say if you want to live in Misra. You must accept Pharaoh, Pharaoh as your God, as your Lord, as your provider. Pharaoh was highly surprised. Like, you, you are among those people that believe in oneness of one unseen God, one unknown God. My blossom friend, wife, you are among of them. You have to revoke that word and say, La ilaha illa Pharaoh. The wife said, Alhamdulillah, you heard it from me. That is my belief. Pharaoh said, I will torture you until you renounce that word. She said, no. Pharaoh ordered for her torture. They put a very big rock. They lie her down, put rock on her. She was totally in pain. And she kept saying, La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. La ilaha illallah. She almost went off totally. And Allah opened the sky for her. She was seeing beautiful homes, beautiful palaces, beautiful towers. And she just like Rabbi Ibn Ali in the Kabaitam fil Jannah. I love all this tower I'm seeing. But oh yeah, Allah, Ibn Ali in the Kabaitam fil Jannah. I want you to build a magnificent home for me in the Kabaitam fil Jannah. Make it closer to you in Al Jannah. I don't want to be distant to you. Please. Make my home closer to you. 
and Allah say insha Allah accept it. Then she say wana jini min fir'aun wana jini min qaumi zalimi. Allah save me and Allah take her away. Most important of this is your iman. You acquire that unshakable iman. Have you? Have you acquired that unshakable faith of everyone? Even when you are facing persecution whatsoever. That is Islam. That is religion of love and peace. You deal directly with Allah, not intermediary. God is God. You go straight to him. You pray straight to him. In Islam, you don't pray to someone to get to God. No, we pray direct to God. Although sometimes we need some wasila, which means even your sadaqah, your charity, your offering is wasila in it. It's a step getting closer to God Almighty. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen. As a Muslim, we have several benefits. Allah sent down Al Quran. Hudan wa Nur. Quran is a light. And Allah perfect everything in Holy Quran. Man kala la ilaha illallah mufleh. Whosoever say la ilaha illallah with pure heart will succeed in life. And even hereafter. Man kala la ilaha illallah mufleh. Kalmadu tawheed. You can become a Muslim until you believe that la ilaha illallah. Allah creates everything. Let's take it from here. La ilaha illallah have 12 alphabets. La ilaha illallah contain 12 alphabets. Muhammadun Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa contain 12 alphabets. 12 p.m., 12 hours of p.m., 12 hours of a.m. So when you say La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, you have praised God, you have worshipped him, you have testified to his oneness and holiness for 24 hours by saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because you can't get to Allah without Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You can't get to Allah without Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa not that you worship prophet, but he hold the chain. Allah gave him this religion. That is the commandment. And you know what? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned Yaw, Al Yaw, Al Yaw, Al Yaw, Al Yaw, Day, Day. Day, day in Holy Quran, 365 times. What a great perfection of Quran. What a great perfection of Allah. This is not a coincidence. Day, day, day in Holy Quran was mentioned 365 days. Which means 365 days of the year. And again, Allah mentioned shahar, shahar, month, month, month. Twelve times in whole Quran. And we have twelve months to make a year. Sabu al-Mathani, which is Surah al-Fatiha. Surah al-Fatiha is the first chapter in whole Quran. Started with Bismillah Rahman Rahim, then Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alim. It contains seven verses, and we have seven days in a week. And even we have seven missing alphabets, 
in Surah Al-Fatiha. Seven missing alphabets in Surah Al-Fatiha. Still makes it seven. We have seven sama, seven samawati wal ard. All these are not coincident. This is power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to showcase to you that wa huwa al-hakim. Wa huwa he hakim. Allah possesses best wisdom. Wa nadhir min al-Qur'an ma huwa shifaun wa rahma lil mu'minin. We send down in all Qur'an mercy and shifa the treatment shifa lil mu'minin quran contain everything quran contain remedy remedy to whatsoever form of this of whatsoever you are facing in life you will find the remedy in ul quran but lil mu'minin to those who truly believe in Typically, Muslims of today are suffering because of lack and some imbalancing in their faith. If you believe in Allah, Allah will be with you. Azkuruni, azkurukum. Remember me, azkurukum. I will remember you. That is a vow from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You remember me, I will remember you. You stay and proclaim that you are a believer, I will stand by you. That is Allah for you, most powerful, most supportive. When I got to the mosque today, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh give me this tasbih. Seriously, I was so happy. Because in Islam, Rasulullah sallallahu ta'ala alayhi wa sallam teach us. Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawmil akhir. Fal yukri mudhaifahu. You believe in Allah, in Rasul, and the day of judgment, you care for your visitors. You respect your visitors. Wa nahnu duyufu Allah, wa nahnu duyufu Rahman. And Tijaniya Sufi other people, we used to say, Hadiyatun wajibatun alina, Kaliluha, Kesiruha, Yakfina. Hadiyah, gift. Gift to your friends, to your family, to your sheikh, to your visitor, wajibatun alina. It's a mandatory for us. Because we believe in the teaching of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Khaliluha kathiruha yakfina. Be it little or big or more, we are satisfied with it. I say Jazakallah khairan kasira sheikh. I learned few things since yesterday that I came here. You are very calm. Wa ibadu rahman. Allah dina yafshuna ala al-ard hawna. You are full of wisdom. You are very intelligent. And I appreciate you for that. The way you combine everyone. You sacrifice your time. You sacrifice almost everything for deen of Rasul, for deen of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa sunnah to Rasul, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I want us to emulate him. Before I would drop this mic for a sheikh and for question and answer, Bilal ibn Rabia, radiallahu ta'ala anhu, Bilal was among the uh, companions of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was a black man, first black companion to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He was a slave to Kafir. To some infidel then. He was a slave to Banu al mahzumi They are traders then in Mecca. 
Prophet Sallallahu has established himself. He has been parading himself as Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Anna Nabiyun la kazib. Anna Abun Abdul Muttalib. Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam then has started crusading Islam. Talking to people. Reviving them back to Islam. Then Bilal ibn Rabia, as a slave, you have no freedom. Even if possible, you have no freedom to your own breath. Then, Alhamdulillah for today, things have changed. And we pray, inshallah, for the barakah of today's Juma. Those who are still suffering, those who are still going through modern slavery, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ease their affairs. A lot is still going on behind the scene. But we thank God for our own life, for the opportunity given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Bilal ibn Rabia. He heard about Prophet sallallahu his teaching, and he fell in love for the way of Islam. Like in Islam, there's no slave, there's no master, there's no boss, there's no senior, there's no junior. Kullu sawa. You are brothers. You are all brothers. No category. Just one single ummah. Inna akramakum. Inna allahi atikwakum. Sadaqallahu al-Azim. And Bilal fell in love with this. Ah, what a religion. Someone that has been suffering for years, for ages. You can't sit with your leaders. You can't eat with them. You can't sit with your masters. You are always accountable to them, not even to your soul. You have no free time. You have no pleasure time. You worship them like God. And Bilal heard of teaching of Islam. He fell in love. He started talking to some Muslims. Can you please? What the prophet brought in today who say this ayah, he keep reading the Quran, small, small, little, little, until one day his master discovered that it seems like this black slave is now a Muslim. He confronted him. Are you a Muslim? Have you accepted Muhammad sallallahu teaching? Because then they have no respect for prophet. They called him anyhow. They shouted on him. They disrespected him. But today, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, see how things today. Alhamdulillah. It's not a matter of how far, but how well. He said, Wallahi, summa billahi al ali al azim. Al yaw, ana mu'min, ana muslim. Today, I'm a muslim. His boss was, what an infantry. You, I will beat you to death today. Oh, subhanallah. They tortured him extremely, excessively. Beating. Ya Bilal, kul rabbi alata wal uzza. Say, your Lord, your God is lata and uzza. That is, their are two greatest idols. Then, they will say, Bilal, if you want to free, if you want to enjoy your freedom, and become part of us again, you have to denounce and renounce Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Bilal keeps saying, Ahad, Ahad. He is the one. Only one. Only one. Only one. Who is only one? Allah. Kul. Who Allah? Ahad. 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 Only one. Only one. Bilal keeps saying, Ahad, Ahad. He is the only one. He is the only one. He is the only one. Then, Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq was passing by. 
Same people surrounding Bilal, beating him, tying him down, tied his hand at his back, tortured him, put rock on him. Uh -uh. This was too barbaric. For the sake of what? For the sake of Islam. For the sake of this Ummah. And we are enjoying it today. We owe them a lot. That is why when you send salawat to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, why we say as Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa alihi wa sahabi. May Allah, may the blessing of Allah be upon Prophet, his family, his companion. Because those people suffer for this religion. And Bilal keeps saying, Ahad, Ahad. Sayyidina Abu Bakr Siddiq Rajallah passed through and said, Ah, ah, this, is, this was too barbaric. Okay. Is your slave right? They say, Yes. How much can you sell him for me? If Allah wants to help you, He will make it easy. Surely He tried all sports. Allah is most merciful. And they say, if you want to buy him, okay, they double the money. They multiply it. Abu Bakr said, is that all? And he paid for Bilal. They freed him and he said, today, you free your heart for Allah and Allah grants you freedom. There is no freedom in this life without Islam. If you acquire everything, you are a billionaire, you are a millionaire, whatsoever you are, so far, you are not a believer. You remain a loser despite all what you have. And Bilal got freed. He became a pure Muslim. He became our Muazzin. The first person to call for prayer. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar. Bilal! And he was a former slave. Your status today doesn't count. But what should become of you later in the future? What should become of you later tomorrow is what counts. Days of this life are in two ways. Day of yours and days of others. Whatever you do today, Allah is watching. Allah is saying, angels are recording your deeds. Astaghfirullah al-azim al-lazi la ilaha illa huwa al-ayyul qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. Astaghfirullah al-azim al-lazi la ilaha illa huwa al-ayyul qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. Astaghfirullah al-azim al-lazi la ilaha illa huwa al-ayyul qayyum wa atubu ilayhi. May Allah forgive all our shortcomings, be with us, grant us ease. And grant us fulfillment, grant us adequate strength to keep propagating the religion of Islam. May Allah be with us, stand by us. Whatsoever we are doing, may Allah put barakah on it for us. MashaAllah, I have to drop this for now for our Sheikh. Then, if anybody have any question, then we commence. Jazakumullah khair, Sheikh Habibi. So very important as the Sheikh was talking about to summarize two things. We have to know who we are and we are the servant of Allah. And we have to be proud to be servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When you are a servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you know you have a mission and we all have a mission and we try our best to succeed or to do it the best way our mission. As a Muslim you have a lot of challenge in this world today. As a Muslim you have a big mission, big mission because you have a sahib risala, you have the missus. And you have to understand the message and be with the others. That is what he's talking about. And Islam being Tawheed. All we are doing is the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, one of the poets he said, I mentioned it today. Hasbun nafsi faqran. 
أو حق حسب النفس كرما بأني عبد يحتفي بي بلا موعد رب وهو في قدسه الأعز ولكن أنا ألقى متى وأين أحبه So what made me proud is only because I am the servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today we will talk about when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ibadi, wajmun ya ibadi. When my servant, my servant. And that is the best call. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Isra, Subhanahu wa ta'ala asra bi abdihi, not bi nabihi, not bi rasulihi, but bi abdihi. Mean we have to know we are all servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we have to do our job and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will registrate we are a servant of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inna ibadi laysa laka alim sultan. Wa ida sa'alaka ibadi. Anni. Fadukuli fi ibadi. Mean if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your service, your prayers will be accepted. Your, 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 your zikr, your Quran. Will be accepted. That's the most all we are needing. And we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to reward the Shaykh for the dust he is giving. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make those who receive the Quran and the deen yastabi'un al qawla fa yastabi'un al ahsana. Those when they hear the message, when they hear the message, when they receive the message, and they will follow in the best way. That is, all what we are talking is about the Quran and the Sunnah. It's a very good uh, reminder, and we may benefit it, inshallah. And we want everybody, mashallah, to. Uh, we have a guest in the knowledge. This only thing the one we can honor him, like asking questions, or what thing we don't understand. When we used to be in the madrasa, because we go as a uh, house of Shuyo. Usually when the guests used to come after Isha, back home in the village, what they did, we said that we bring the chair, we give the chef on, uh, a chair under the tree. And he sit there. Mostly sometimes we have a light, sometimes we not. And we are all sitting around him. And the show used to say, Ya Fikum al Bahar Rahim al Yawm. He said, A guest coming today, that's also in of knowledge. You know? And whoever coming with a question, and the show used to sit down like this, as you see, and we as a student, sometimes you read in the books, you have some question, question about the fiqh, question about the grammar, question about the balagha, question, question about a uh, question about the tafsir Quran, some ayat you don't understand what this meaning, or something like very, very difficult to follow you, all this type of question. Uh, that's why we used to give them very hard time. Very hard time those few who used to come. In, for next time, before you come, you gotta get ready. But alhamdulillah, Rabbil uh, Alameen, uh, we can benefit this all this, inshallah, if you have questions or we have ta'liqat. And seem to, to talk about or uh, to add what he was talking also. You don't know what I'm going to write the, the mic. We're going to give everybody 